Are the days of the pro cycling team numbered? Britain's oldest bike brand has a new team on the British racing scene, and it was headline news, but probably not in the way you expect. Ribble has ruffled some feathers on the domestic scene, and their new Ribble Collective has potentially lifted a lid on what bike racing will look like going forward. Now, Ribble's continued support for British racing is a big deal, so what exactly are they doing? How will they do it? And will this new project add to Ribble's success over the last few years? In this video, we break down everything you need to know about Britain's newest squad. So the Ribble Collective might look like a race team from the outside, but it's essentially a multi-gender, multi-discipline setup. They claim that each one of the riders is a privateer racer that has the full backing of the Ribble brand. So that means the riders choose their own calendars and Ribble supports with equipment and money. In a way, it's an in-house factory racing team, but with riders taking the initiative instead of the brand. We're not sure if we'll see team vehicles in a large logistical setup at races like other teams, but from what we hear, the riders are still getting plenty of support, and that means salaries, kit, and more. Without doubt, you'll recognize some of the names on the roster. Cameron Jeffers continues his long-time affiliation with the brand, and Amir Mella comes over from the world of cyclocross. Joe Laverick will take his first steps away from the pro road scene under collective colors, and a stalwart of the British racing scene, Mikey Mottram, joins up as well. So is it just a team? A big question is where does the team line end and the privateer line begin? Particularly on the national scene and outside of the UCI continental ranks, where we don't usually see team buses and big operations, the Ribble Collective looks like a traditional cycling team. Everyone rides the same kit and the same bike, but at least according to Ribble, that's where the comparisons end. There are arguably some similarities to be found with the Spectra Cannondale team. In fact, one third of the Ribble Collective roster were on Spectra last year. And from what we can tell, the biggest difference is the freedom that the riders get. Everyone can choose their own calendar and not have to bow to team commitments. There's also a slightly unusual sponsorship model. While the Ribble Collective has partners, the riders aren't obligated to use that equipment. A great example is with Cameron Jeffers, the highest profile rider. Cam will be using Halo wheels this season, even though the majority of the collective will be riding on Mavic. How does it work? Each rider on the collective is provided with support in the form of a full bike and kit. On top of that, every rider receives a small amount of money depending on the demand to their calendar. In fact, one of our copywriters here at Monument Cycling, Joe Laverick, is also on the Ribble Collective. While he wouldn't allude to the exact amount of money he'll get, and I did try to ask him, he mentioned on Twitter that the amount he receives from Ribble is more than his salary on Madison Genesis. And honestly, that's really good to hear and should start to raise the bar for other teams. That being said, the riders are still expected to pay for their own travel accommodation and expenses out of that pot the Ribble gives them. So you have to take that into account when thinking about how much the riders are really getting. Now, this wouldn't be cycling if there wasn't some criticism and Ribble's launch was met with that criticism, especially amongst the hardcore road racing scene. Some claimed on social media that Ribble's new endeavor was simply supporting a bunch of influencers and others questioned how the men's continental road team had folded, but there was still money in the pot for the new collective. Not once to speculate, we got in touch with Ribble to question them about this, and they came back with the following. Not only do we continue to sponsor Life Plus Wahoo Women's Conti team, but also support Ribble Recharge as the domestic under-23 team and the Garden Shed Ribble Verge cyclocross squad, all in a very traditional bike manufacturer sponsorship capacity. Therefore, traditional team support still very much has a place in our current 2023 sponsorship strategy. At this point, it's worth mentioning that Ribble remained committed to the 2022 Pro Team, but the team lost its other title sponsor, and that was what led to the decision to fold. They continued that it offers so much more than just having riders racing on their bikes, plus offering an opportunity to support across multiple genders and categories beside a continental men's road team, including gravel and triathlon, which would otherwise not have been supported by Ribble. Now, this is a really important thing for you to remember as well. Brands want to reach different demographics, and rather than a whole team for each of them, a collective like this can fit in well with the traditional marketing strategy alongside the other teams that they support. Finally, is it a good thing? It's certainly a change of tide, and there's no hiding from the fact that their new move goes against the traditional sponsorship model. Of course, the Ribble Collective is 100% owned by Ribble, unlike most other situations where a bike brand is simply a sponsor. The fact that a British bike brand is putting money into a British-centric team simply can't be ignored. Looking from the outside and hearing rumours of some of the financial commitments made to riders, we'd estimate that the overall investment is in the six-figure range. It's also a good marketing endeavour. With their 12 riders, Ribble are able to hit at least five different disciplines of bike racing. And what it does is paint an interesting picture for the British domestic road scene. 
Ribble effectively joins a long list of British cycling brands who have moved a large portion of their marketing budget away from domestic road racing and into a multi-discipline approach. This move will certainly be an interesting one to follow, so what are your thoughts? Were Ribble right to set up the collective, or should they stick to the pro team model?